Hello insiders, this is an Inside IOST tutorial. We're gonna show you how to make your account safe from hackers. That's so even if someone gets the private key you're using, you can still save most of your funds from being stolen. We're gonna to use Token Pocket for this, and it's the only way I know of so far other than command line to do this. So I recommend you use Token Pocket. We here recommend you use Token Pocket as a wallet. So I've opened Token Pocket. You see I have a little bit of IOST here, and right over here, it, you can see it says Frozen 1000. Well, those are all staked. Some of them are staked to resources. I can tap resources and see that I've got things staked to RAM and gas. And then some of them are staked to voting. I've voted for a node here, so I've got some IOST staked there. Now, all of this IOST is controlled by a private key. You're used to that if you've worked with other cryptos. Maybe you've been in Ethereum. You know that if someone gets your private key, your IOST can be stolen. But one of the powerful features of IOST, and this is something it shares with EOS, is it has a permission system. So your account, your private key, has permissions to control your account, but those permissions can be changed. So if you go and tap uh, permissions right here, this permissions button, you can see that you have two keys by default. You have an owner key and an active key. Now, right now they're the same, and that's the default situation. But you can set it up so that they're different. You can keep your owner key safe, and then if anyone gets your active key and tries to unstake this IOST you have, so that seven days later they can sell it, you can kick them out by using your owner key to change your active key because the owner key is like the boss of the active key. If you've ever driven in one of those cars where there's a driving instructor helping you out and they have their own brake pedal to stop the car in case you're a maniac and you know you don't know how to use a car or your foot slips and you hit the accelerator really hard, that instructor isn't really driving the car there, but they're there as a backup if needed to take control. We have the same situation with flight instructors, right? And normal planes, when the co-pilot's flying and the pilot's not flying, there's another set of controls so that if something happens to the co-pilot or the student, maybe they get shot, or maybe they they have a seizure, or maybe they just, I don't know, they do something weird with the controls, they panic, whatever. Anything happens, the other person in the cockpit can take control of the plane and save the day. That's what your owner key is. You don't use it normally, but it gives you the peace of mind to use your active key wherever. You can put it in websites, you can use it in apps, you can put it in token pocket, you can put it in iWallet, and you're confident that if you have a virus and it's stolen, you can still save most of your funds. So I'm gonna show you how to do this right now. First, we're gonna do it the token pocket way. All right, I have my owner and active key here, and I can actually create all kinds of other keys as well. I could set up multi-sig, we could have an organization that uses this account, whatever but we want to modify our owner key. So I hit modify on my owner key, and it says I can enter a new public key. If you want to create a key cold, like if you want to create it in a way that's not connected to the internet, so you're sure no one is watching you create that key, we'll do that a little bit later. But right now, let's assume you just trust Token Pocket, you're not running a jailbroken or rooted device. Uh, let's hit key generator up here at the top right. Token Pocket will generate a new random key and you can hit this little random button, refresh button as many times as you want until you get one that you like. Then you wanna back up your private key. I wouldn't create a screenshot, but you can hold down on it with your finger to copy it. You can paste it somewhere else, you can write it down. Don't send it in a text message or an email or post it to social media or anything like that because the whole point of this is that this key will remain secret and unavailable to hackers in the internet. So here's a private key I like. I've copied it out, I've made sure it's correct. I've saved it somewhere because this is the most important key on my account. I hit use. It asks me to confirm that I've backed up. I hit confirm and now I have to hit confirm again. Don't hit back. Hit confirm again. It'll ask you to change info. You'll do face ID or your wallet password or whatever you need to do here. The transaction goes through and now you can see I have a different owner key. Now the active key can do basically anything with my account. It can stake, unstake, vote, use dApps, it can send, it can receive, whatever. The owner key can do all those things too, but the owner key has permission to change the active key. So let's say a hacker now gets my active key the hacker can try to unstake this 1000 frozen IOST in order to spend it later. And if I see that happening, 
I can go in with my owner key and create a new active key and kick the attacker out. The attacker might even try to change my current active key. You know, he might try to change keys, but he can't take control of this staked IOST. As long as I keep the bulk of my IOST stake, I use it to vote for nodes and get resources, and I keep a different owner key safe, then I can keep my account safe from hackers even if they get the private key I'm using. Now, maybe you uh, don't necessarily trust your phone or token pocket or whatever to not be snooping when you create an owner key. In that case, you can even hop on the computer. You can uh, go to iWallet on your computer. You have to install this Go programming language first. And then once you do, it's installing. All right, so I come into the terminal here and your terminal or command line might look completely different from mine, but I'm gonna type in go, get, and then this URL, github.com, which will download and install iWallet. Let's go. iWallet is the official IOST command line wallet. Hopefully you won't have to use it that often, but if you really wanna securely generate a key offline, it's the way to go. So iWallet's installed. It's actually installed in a place in your user directory uh, called go forward slash bin. So if you type in this command, it should change directories there so that you can run iWallet. You might have to do dot forward slash iWallet. There we go. All right, now, so iWallet throws up all these different parameters you can use. We don't have to worry about all those. All we want to do is say iWallet key. And iWallet will generate a key pair for us. Now, if you want to be extra sure, you can turn your computer's Wi-Fi off, you can unplug the Ethernet cable, whatever, and still use this to generate a key, all right? So I'm going to generate a key pair to my liking. Now, here's the secret key. This is the private key I'm gonna use, and this will never go anywhere else but where I choose from here. I can write it down, I can save it on a computer that never even touches the internet, anything like that, in order to keep this key safe. So I can take this public key that I just generated from my computer and go into Token Pocket, maybe I message it to myself, the public key, not the private key, and I head to permissions again. Here's a different demo account. You see that the owner and active keys are the same as they usually are. I hit modify. And now instead of getting key generator, I can actually paste in that new key that I generated. It started with 669. And I hit confirm here and use my password again to set my owner key to be that public owner key, that secret key that I created on my computer. Now you'll notice the permissions up here, I can no longer modify the owner key from Token Pocket because Token Pocket doesn't know the owner key. I can't even modify the active one. Token Pocket, I can use my apps, I can send IOST, but I can't change these keys anymore because the owner private key isn't known by Token Pocket. It's just known by me. And so if anyone tries to get in, they get my active key somehow. Maybe there's a malicious dap or I'm fished and I put my key in the wrong place and I see some suspicious activity on my account. Maybe someone is unstaking all my votes and I wasn't aware of it or someone's actually transferred out the unstaked IOST, which is a small portion. Then I can go in, enter my owner key in a Token Pocket and kick the active key that's compromised out and institute a new active key to secure my account. This is Peter K with Inside IOST. If you enjoyed this video, if it was helpful, if you want to see more videos like it, please go vote for the Inside IOST node and make sure you subscribe to and watch our YouTube podcast channel where we bring you weekly IOST news and updates.